to middle school. It's a good thing. Come on, everybody. I can see the fear in some of your eyes as you walk through, as you were looking into all the nooks and crannies of the building. Um, but welcome. My name is Mindy Malaski. I am the principal here um, of the middle school. And I have been in the district. I am completing my 27th year. You can clap for me. I'm old. many of you who were my students um, when I was a high school teacher. So uh, it's nice to have you here. Um, we are excited for your students to be coming to the middle school. I just recently got to shadow a sixth grader and it was an interesting day. We had a lot of fun. I experienced recess and I haven't had recess in a very long time. And uh, so now I know, I know our kids here love phys ed, but now I can understand why they even love it more um, for their time that they had at recess there. And then I also took gym as well. But it was a great day. I met a lot of great kids. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting them when they come here um, in the summertime for orientation, but we also will be going there. So this is the first um, of a many, I shouldn't say many, but about three orientations that we have. So tonight is Middle School 101, which you will be learning about the curriculum. That's what tonight is about. We will invite you back in June during the school day because I know that everybody's curious about what happens here during the day and what it's like because you've probably heard that you know, kids get locked in lockers and um, we don't let them in the hallways and uh, you know it's just mad none of that is true um, so it's a great place and we, we invite you to come back in June because you also will hear from our kids so our eighth grade ambassadors will do a presentation and they will talk about just everything about the school our house system they'll talk about activities and then they will also talk about academics as well with you but you hear firsthand from the kids and that will be in June um, and then in August we have the same day that we have our orientation with kids we'll invite you back for um, an hour or so and really that's a recap if you if you've been to this you've been to the next thing or you've called me and you've asked me questions, you really don't need to come to the August one. It's up to you if you want to hear things again, but it'll just be the same stuff that we've been going over. But that's your choice. And then we have an open house. And the open house is usually the day before school starts where kids can come in and try their lockers, check out where their classrooms are, and that's on your own. It's like the, bu the building is open for you to just walk through. Because again, I know you're curious to see where their locker is, help them get it set up. Don't buy those locker inserts with the shelves. Don't buy them, it's a waste of money, they can't have them. I'll tell you that right now, don't get them. Um, I've seen kids with these little chandeliers in there. It lasts for maybe two weeks. Okay, so just say no, it's okay. Um, they just need binders and folders and things like that. Um, but I lost my train. That, that's the open house, and that's we open the building for an hour, and you can kind of go through their schedule with them. When you get their schedule, do not panic. Do not go crazy. Try to figure it out for them. We will help them through it. That's the hardest part of middle school for you guys. It's your anxiety for them. And so we're going to talk about that tonight and hopefully relieve that some of that anxiety for you. All right? I'm going to be very upfront with you. I, I'm a direct talker. Some people like that, some people don't. You know, I, like, as I said, I've been doing this for 27 years. I was a high school teacher, a high school administrator. I was a coach. I then became the assistant principal here and then the principal. I can't remember how long I've actually been here in the middle school. I love it. I don't know how I even got here at the middle school. You're laughing at me. And um, so, but it happens, and it's a great place. It is two fast years, and your kids, you're going to like them some days, and you're going to not like them on other days. All right, let's watch this cute little, and here's just another one about us.
All right, so let's get to it. So as I said, my name is Mindy Molaski. I am the principal. Um, I'd like to introduce our assistant principal, Mr. Solomon. Give him a warm hand. Mr. Solomon has been with the, this is his, he's been initiated to middle school. So he was a high school, he thought he was going to be a high school lifer, um, teacher, coach, uh, dean of students, and then he's been here now and as he's been converted, right, Mr. Solomon? Never going back. Never going back. <laughs> All right, so what should you expect from us? What should you expect? You should expect good things. All right, this as you just got to see on those videos, you got to see that this is a warm, friendly environment. We are student-centered. We love our kids. We want them to come to school. We want them to love their school. We want them to be happy. It's difficult being a middle schooler. All right, they got to deal with a lot of stuff. Their bodies are changing. So they're physically changing. Their attitude about school life is all starting to really form and they have a lot of opinions about things. They want to be independent. They want to um, be part of a group and have their friends like them and be all about social media. And we have to guide them through this. It gets messy at times. It gets really messy. Uh, but we have an excellent faculty. We have teachers that truly care about your kids. And they come to school each and every day trying to make a difference for them. So know that they care for them. You saw that uh, You Matter, We Care. Uh, that was a slogan that we were using uh, for two or three years. We're now, we can now talk about being a cardinal and what that actually means. We have a challenging curriculum. We have a lot of communication, so we will talk about that tonight, ways that you can learn about the middle school and keep in touch with us, but the biggest part of middle school is the social emotional piece. They cry, they're angry, they will yell, and then they will cry again. Uh, they'll come in my office just for nothing, and they cry. <laughs> um, and that's okay, because we have to coach them and we have to work on uh, helping them through uh, what it is to be a middle schooler. So we talk about what that means in terms of the social emotional. Do they have that awareness? Do they know who they are as a person? Are they self-aware of their behaviors, their habits? You know, one of the things is they, they don't turn their homework in. You know they did it, but for some reason it didn't get turned in. So what's the why behind that? So if they know it, what's holding them back? Or they tell you what's the typical thing. They say, oh, I don't have any homework. I got nothing to do. Um, I just recently found a student that was able to change Genesis. And not actually physically change it, but the screen that he was showing his mom, there's some kind of app that you can overlay on it. So you guys have to check on your own. Don't just tell them, show me your grades. Because they know all the tricks and treats. It was great when the teacher contacted, uh, the mom contacted the uh, teachers going, you know, what's going on, you know, and kind of, you know, ripping the teacher a little. And um, when we found out, her son was changing the grades a little bit in, on the screen to show some stuff. Um, so we have to help them in terms of uh, being aware of their own behaviors and how that affects them um, and who they are. Self-management, big piece, they're not organized. Their frontal lobes are not fully developed yet. So many of you walked by the lost and found on your way in this morning, or this, this evening. That's no joke, right? I donate, and that's, that's been donated three times over. Okay, so we donate every marking period. We're about to donate, we're waiting for parent conferences so parents can go through it one more time. There's expensive stuff. Did you see those water bottles? Those are not cheap. So there's a lot of stuff there. They will tell you somebody took it. They will say, they might even say somebody stole it. That is not true. They lost it. <laughs> they absolutely lost it. They have no idea. They will swear up and down they brought it to school. They will tell us, we go to the camera, we watch them come in school, they never had it. <laughs> it's sitting at home at the door. The other piece of it is, 
that they will forget and they will call you and will, they will say, please bring this. I forgot my sneakers for track. I forgot my um, computer. How can you forget the computer? They forgot their book bag. They forgot their lunch. They will call you for everything. And I'm going to tell you this. Resist. Do not come every single time, okay? They need to learn to get their things here. That's gonna be hard for you, right? Because they're gonna be on the other line, and what are they gonna do? What did I say they do? They cry. <laughs> and then they nag you. And then because you're tired, you got other kids, you got work, you got stuff, you give in because it's easier, all right? That's a decision you gotta make on your own, but you need to think about that as you're going to navigate, because you will be here a lot, and you will know Mrs. Pressman and Mrs. Sloan by name, and you'll get them holiday gifts, and you'll get them donuts and flowers, because they're going to see your face all the time. I'm funny, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you get into middle school. Um, you start to read your mind, but no, seriously, just think about that before you bring your, bring, you just keep coming. Relationship skills, and when I talk about relationship skills, we're not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend, we're talking about, you know, not romantic relationships, we're talking about all relationships in terms of skills. How do they have the relationship with you? You know, because if you're on their back, how do they tell you, mom, dad, I'm, you're, 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 you're suffocating me, and I need some room. That's a hard conversation with some of you because you're scary, right? I'm scared of some of you right now. Um, I saw you come in. I saw a lot of people coming in and they gave me the once over. So I know that it's scary for them to talk to you as well. Um, but we need to help them navigate their relationships, build those skills with their classmates. They're going to do a lot of group projects. You know, those are the skills they need, not only for high school, but beyond. They need to know how to work with other people and not hide behind their phone. They need to know how to have conversations, look somebody in the eye, shake their hand, say hello, good morning. So those are things that we work on. We talk about social awareness. Beyond the walls of Lawrence Middle School, what's happening out there in the world? So we get the social awareness as well, and then how do we make good decisions? They're going to mess up. You're going to get the call from Mr. Solomon. He's going to call you and he's going to tell you that they did something that you're not proud of. Right? That's hard. That's a hard phone call. You're going to then immediately come to your child's rescue and say, well, what did everybody else do? Did they really say that? You're going to start questioning. Did somebody actually see it happen? Was it an adult that saw it happen or was it another kid that happened? Just stop. All right, let's talk about it. Let's build it. If they made a poor decision, it's not the end of the world. College transcripts will not see their middle school. Their college uh, recommendations will not see their middle school transcript transcripts. They will not see their discipline record. Most times kids will get a, get a detention in middle school. It's a badge of honor for some of them, right? Uh, some of them will decorate. I had a kid when I was at the high school, they would decorate their locker with their discipline slips. Right? I'm not sure you know it. It wasn't you. It might have been you. <laughs> uh, so that's what happens, right? They want to they be cool, they want to fit in, but it's okay. It, it's a clean slate once they go beyond here. And they need to learn from those mistakes. Okay? So don't be afraid of Mr. Solomon Calls. He's a really nice guy. Really nice. So if he calls you, it's all good. We'll work it out. No, we'll work it out. So some facts about us. Seventh and eighth grade, it is two quick years. We've got about 600 kids in the building. We have a seven-period seven day. It's a straight schedule. Um, classes run 51 minutes. And they have math, language, art, science, social studies every single day the entire school year. And then the other classes become every other day. So that means we have a red-white schedule. It'll appear on their report card or on their uh, schedule as a A, B day. This is what makes you guys crazy. So you're trying to figure out where they are, what they're doing, da-da-da. Don't worry about it. We will go through that with them, what a red day looks like.
like, what a white day looks like, uh, what their class is in rotation looks like, and so forth. So don't get stressed about that. Um, it'll happen. They will we give them a grace period for being late for the first uh, couple weeks, and we'll guide them through. If it's not the teachers, then the ambassadors, the eighth graders are great and they will help. So don't believe anything about the mean eighth graders because they're really nice. Um, we have world language in our, you'll hear tonight that we have a world language survey class. Our kids take art, um, they take communications and technology every other day. Phys Ed, we have musical groups, we have ESL programs, we have special ed programs, they've got computers, we have academic um, support instruction in both language arts and math. We have two fabulous school counselors and three child study team members. So two psychologists and a social worker. What I didn't put on here also is that we also have a mental health therapist um, that we recommend students to if they need assistance. And she does not only student therapy, she also does family therapy as well. Um, and I think I didn't say gifted and talented. We have gifted and talented also. We have a house structure. So I'm sure you've all heard about this. Your kids have told you, I want to be on, name it? Phoenix. Phoenix, okay, see, somebody out there knows. I want to be on Draco, I want to be on Orion. So we have three houses, they're instructional houses. They have all the same classes. There's not one house that's better than the other. Don't believe them when they say that. They have all the same things, they get all the same opportunities. The issue is, is that their older brother and sister, their cousin, their neighbor, whoever told them the best house to be is whatever it is. And they believe that to be true. When I was there on Friday, my the young lady that I was shadowing, she already gave me her request. <laughs> I said, that's nice, but it's not going to happen. Um, so anyway, what happens, uh, we changed this, I think last year. Because what was happening is, you guys started to outsmart me a little bit and say that, oh, you would call me and tell me my child or meet me in the summer. You know, here's four names that I like my child to be with or you could talk about it. They have to be with this person, yada, yada, yada. And they were uh, brother, sisters, siblings of students in a certain house. So that was your way to get your child into a certain house. So we, what we've done is, like I told you, I'm very direct and honest. So now what we've done is, we're doing away with that. We used to have like a legacy kind of thing, if, because we know that you were familiar with those teachers, or that you, um, you liked, you know, you know, you had the black t-shirt already, you know, that kind of stuff. So now we just decide. We just go, it's a random, we don't do the legacy piece anymore, and you can be in any house, all right? It's okay. When you open the letter, it's important, Mom and Dad, not to cry. Because <laughs> you will. Some of you will. All right, you're going to show your expression on your face. They're going to see it. And then we don't start off well in September. We want to start off happy. Okay? So you have to hold back that emotion. It's all good. They're all coming to Lawrence Hills. You're going to get rid of them on September 4th. They're coming here anyway. You might as well make it a happy thing and just talk it up how great it is for that house. All right? If you do have questions about friendships and all of those things, you can call me. We can meet. If you want to tell me about your child in terms of how they are as a learner so that I can help set them up with the right teachers. But remember, teachers change. People, are, people get pregnant. They go out. People move. Um, teachers decide, uh, get new staff that comes in. So I can't promise you anything, right? So what Phoenix looked like two years ago when your 10th grader was here is different now than it looked like two years ago. The kids are different on that house. And here's the other thing. When they come home and they tell you, I don't know anybody, there's a hundred kids. They got to know somebody. And guess what? It's a good time to make a new friend. It's a good time to get with other people. They're going to know somebody. So don't worry. They're not going to walk around the school being lonely. All right. Those are the three houses. We have three house leaders. And the house leaders are your first go-to. So if you have questions about anything, these are the people that you're going to go to. You'll learn more about this. This will 
all come out again. We're videotaping tonight, so you'll this presentation will be posted. But these are your three people. These names are the leaders, and they run all the HAPS activities, events, um, and activities. So they're good people to know. They know actually better any, than anybody what's going on in their classrooms, because I usually go to them first. Okay? We'll answer questions at the end. Okay? Um, and then I have my friends over here tonight that are going to be presenting to you about um, the curriculum. So our instructional supervisors, Dr. Damian Barriaxa, who is our K-12 supervisor of all of those things that you see up there. So technology, library, art, music, business, uh, family consumer science. I don't think that's up there. No, it's not. Uh, business, all those all things those are. Yeah, those are all at the high. Some of those things are at the high school, but here he's in charge of these people. Um, Michelle Dreamer is our supervisor for special education, seven to age twenty-one. Um, Melanie Filmeyer is our guidance supervisor. She is the district supervisor. She's not with us tonight, but many of you might already know her because she's been at lots of events. Because she again is K twelve. Uh, most of you are here. You can admit it. You can shake your head or not make eye contact with me right now. That you are here to learn about math. I'm looking at one of them, she's going to try to look down when she's not. She made good eye contact because she's been in middle school before, so she's been trained. Uh, but our math uh, science supervisor is Yvette Panasovic. Um, Dr. Mary Pankos is English, World Languages, ESL, what else? Social Studies. I knew there was one other. And then um, Mr. Zenovic, who is our athletic director. He's not with us tonight, but we'll go over all of his slides because that's one of the exciting things of middle school is athletics. Time. Time is changing. They got to get up earlier. All right. They have to be here at 745. School ends at 245. Uh, early dismissal is 1215. We do not serve lunch on those days. And then building opens. It usually opens a little bit earlier than this because the first buses arrive around 715. So if you are going to drop your student off, don't do it before 7.15. When they come in, seventh graders go to the gym, eighth graders come to the auditorium, and then we send them off um, around 7.35 uh, to their classes. So they're not in these locations that long, bless you. Um, they also, we also serve breakfast. So if you're running late, they need to grab something to eat, they can do that and they can bring that off to their class, their next period. All right, so I talked to you, I said at the beginning of this, we do a lot of communication, and so here is all the different ways. So how many of you use Genesis already? Check grades. Good job, and I just told you the horror story of that. Um, the LTPS website, if you go to the middle school website page, you will see lots of different information, lots of different links, teacher pages, and all of that. Uh, there are teacher websites. All of our teachers are used Google Classroom. How many of you are familiar with Google Classroom? Good, this is a good crowd. Very smart here. So Google Classroom is where you find all of your teacher information. So again, when they're telling you there's no homework, tell them to go open up their Google Classroom and so you can see their calendars and see what is there. You can pretty much see what they've handed in, what's happening, what the do now was for the day, um, activities through Google Classroom. You're going to get a lot of phone calls from me or from Mrs. Pressman from the main office or emails. They come to you if you want to delete them. They come to you as LMS Nation. All right, that's what we're known as. So everything, all of our social media, all of our communication is to use. Uh, so if you want to block us, you're blocking LMS Nation. Uh, but don't block us because we get lots of love and information to you. So alert now and phone messages and email messages that we will send you. How many of you got something about this through an email? And phone down, I'm not sure she did a phone down, just the email, okay. Um, and then Facebook, LMS Nation, that's for the older crowd, we, we use, still use Facebook. Just teasing. Um, you'll get quick news in the, for the district. We have a Twitter page, we have an Instagram. The Instagram is really geared for kids, but we'd love to have you there as well. We do inspirational messages, we do lots of pictures of kids there, things that are happening in the school. Um, and then I just recently started a podcast. And so you can find that by just going to the podcast app. Um, you can 
listen to some of our shows. I think we've done five shows, and the last one that we did was actually kids on the podcast. Um, so we did a series about reading and how you can help your child with reading, and then we did one about an upcoming, we did about vaping, and then we had the kids on because we had an author visit, and it was five or six students that talked about their experience with that author. So that's a new venture that we just started. We try to go live every now and then, either on Twitter, um, on Instagram, or on Facebook. So if we're having an event, like you got to see some of the house relays or field days, and or we have some kind of great guest speaker, or we or a concert, I'll try to go live. It won't be for the full hour, but you might get a glimpse to see um, what's happening here at the middle school, or if we're on a trip or something. All right, so that's all the ways. We have a cardinal code. So our kids earn star tickets, and they can put them in the bins. Those are not garbage cans out front. They are prize, or they're star ticket bins. And we are recognizing kids for being ready, responsible, and respectful. And we talk about that, we teach it to them. What does that look like in the hallways? What does it look like when you come into the auditorium? What does it look like to be ready for gym class? So that the first few weeks of school, we're really driving home the Cardinal Code, and then every Friday, sometimes Monday, sometimes whenever we feel like it, we play music and we call kids down and they get Dunkin' Donuts, they get pretzels, they get gift cards, because we're just happy they're here. So we want to recognize kids for following the Cardinal Code. Whew. Okay, that was me. Now I'm going to give the, po uh, the microphone up to Dr. Pankos. Thank you. It's so happy to see you all here tonight. I'm going to talk briefly about the four departments that I supervise. Um, so we have English language arts, uh, which every child has to take. Um, we do things a little differently here at the middle school than you might be used to in LIS. So what we try to do is we try to expose your students to literature that they might not have encountered before. So for example, right now our seventh graders are doing a science fiction unit. A lot of students don't read science fiction down at LIS. And our teachers walk the students through that type of literary genre. Uh, we do a lot of independent reading in our classes as well, and of course we support them in writing. If our students are having a little bit of difficulty, we do recommend that they stay in the ASI class. That class is taught by their classroom teacher, and it's a nice small group. So they do a lot of pre-teaching. Sometimes they just use that time to look at their writing and really work with the child individually to strengthen the child where they need the support. Um, we also have a communications class, which is fantastic. Um, Mindy mentioned Oh, do you want to show them the video? Yeah. Mindy has a video. Uh, Mindy mentioned earlier that we had uh, a focus on social skills and interacting. Recently, uh, about a couple weeks ago, we had an interview day where all the eighth graders competed um, in the interview day, and we brought in members from the community um, to come in and interview our students and give them a break.
difficult for an eighth grader to do, but every single one of them participated in that. And we train students, and we really work with them to make them successful in that day. Um, I participated as an interviewer, and I know somebody else in here did too. And did you have a nice day? I had an awesome day. It's a great experience. You did a great job. Yeah, thank you. The students really did an awesome job. But we really want to prepare them um, for engaging with adults, right? That's eventually where we're getting to, we're getting to the adult world. So we do a really nice job in doing that. The final class we have in English Language Arts is a seminar class. And like the ASI class, the seminar class is a support class. The students get it half a year at that set with math. We do that to just really hone in on some of the skills for all of our students, just to make sure that they're getting what they need, especially in nonfiction and analyzing the text. Social studies, we have um, American history that's taught thematically, so it's done a little bit differently. We really try to engage students in civics and the world going on around us today, especially this is a really interesting time in American history, and we really want to make those connections to the past and see that some of the things that we're dealing with right now really aren't that new, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, um, the world history course in eighth grade is precursor to the ninth grade course. So there's two years of world history right now. In world language, as Mindy mentioned earlier, we have a world language survey. In seventh grade, they get a trimester of each language. They get Spanish for trimester, French for trimester, and Chinese for trimester. In eighth grade, they're asked to choose one of the languages. Um, because we have those languages available at the middle school, we're able to successfully push the kids into an AP class eventually at the high school. Um, and a lot of our students um, I'm working with right now as seniors are testing for the seal of biliteracy. That means that they're able to communicate with proficiency in another language and put that towards their college, possibly waiving them from the language requirement as a college, but also it makes you more employable. So if you speak another language at home, I'm going to encourage you to continue to speak that other language at home. Give your child the skills and support that they need in that language. If you're one of my ESL parents, please continue to do that. If you don't speak another language at home, please take a world language and learn more about yourself and the world around you. And with that, who do I get to pass it off to? Oh, I believe it's Amy. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Damien Mariexa. I'm a supervisor of all those things that Mindy mentioned earlier. And before I go into my little bit, I just want to really co-sign what Mindy said about um, all those kind of social emotional changes. I've been living the middle school life in my house for the last few years now. <laughs> for all the good and, and, and better stuff that goes with that. Uh, my son is wrapping up his, uh, his middle school experience in the district in which we live right now. And my daughter will be starting middle school next year. So. Um, it's been, but it's actually been a really great experience, and I know in, in my case, um, I've really seen through the eyes of parents how the expanded opportunities for extracurriculars, uh, in my case, in, in my family's case in the arts, really gives kids a chance to find, uh, you know, kind of maybe make some new friendships and some new relationships and really feel very comfortable and really start to blossom. Uh, so. You know, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience for my son. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful experience for my daughter, and it'll be a great experience for your kids as well. Uh, so we have a few things to talk about tonight as far as the arts, uh, the visual and practical arts are concerned in LMS. Uh, in seventh grade, the art classes uh, focus primarily on two-dimensional art, drawing and painting. Uh, in eighth grade, we'll move into three-dimensional art, uh, you know, pottery, sculpture. We have a kiln here. Ms. Ms. Richardson, our art teacher, will fire some of the students' projects. And if we get a chance to tour the building, please do take a look. Ms. Richardson always puts the students' art on display, and since it is, it, it, she, her displays are, are wonderful and made even more wonderful by the, the, the art that the students create. Uh, this is their last chance uh, in the K-12 system to do kind of a survey of different, of different art, uh, artistic techniques. But when they get to high school, they can actually pick specific classes in which they specialize painting, drawing, pottery, sculpture, commercial art. Uh, we have also offer AP Studio Art, but that's a few years down the road for you guys. Uh, in the technology department, Mr. Stamatelos uh, runs our technology lab here. It's right at the very beginning, there at the uh, very entrance of the school. Uh, it's similar in setup to the launch lab at Mr. Rubenstein's launch lab at the intermediate school. Uh, very hands-on. 
fun uh, problem solving uh, orientation. Uh, he works a lot with Ms. Uh, Mrs. Kramer, our librarian, to teach the kids information literacy. You know, not everything you read online is true. <laughs> As we are learning. So, uh, so uh, Mr. Stamatelis helps the kids, and Mrs. Kramer helps the kids, uh, guide the kids through that process of, of determining uh, what information is valid and what is not. Mr. Stamatelis does some wonderful things with virtual reality. Uh, website construction uh, continues. He builds on some of the digital citizenship lessons that start in the uh, intermediate and elementary schools. And he also provides the kids a, a kind of an overview of, of uh, elementary coding principles. He builds, again, on what Mrs. Rubenstein did with block, uh, block coding and helps transition the students, for, if they're interested, more towards text-based coding because at the high school, again, they'll have the opportunity to take introduction to JavaScript, introduction to Python, robotics. Uh, AP Computer Science A. So they're, again, we're trying to uh, build on what happened at the intermediate school and get the kids ready for high school as well. In our music department, uh, we have a concert band, we have orchestra, we have a jazz band, we have a chorus uh, for uh, seventh and eighth grade. And for eighth grade, obviously students can't do it next year, but in eighth grade, we also had a performing arts class, which is Kind of a musical theater class. It's a, an overview of, of theater arts, learning not only about performance but also about lighting, learning about production, learning about stagecraft. And Ms. Malaski mentioned earlier the need to develop social emotional skill, the social emotional learning that takes place in middle school. Really, what better discipline to help learn about social emotional learning than the theater and the perspective taking that happens in theater and putting yourself in the position of another person? and kind of walking a mile in their shoes. Uh, finally, in our library, uh, Ms. Eileen Kramer and Ms. Mary Beth Coleman are our uh, libra librarian and library assistant, and they work with the teachers to help teach research skills, uh, information literacy, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, Mrs. Kramer runs our morning video announcements program, WLMS, so if your students are interested in TV video production, this is an awesome opportunity for them to get involved very hands-on in terms of the production and the broadcasting aspect. Um, it, the March Madness Poetry uh, Brackets, uh, as we've done in the past, and she's also, if your students are looking for a book to read, Mrs. Kramer is your person. So, you know, she can, well, I, I like this book and I like that book. She will be able to give your children recommendations upon recommendations for, uh, for great books that she knows they'll enjoy. Um, on the next slide, we just have a brief overview. The, the things I've mentioned before, um, band, orchestra, jazz band, chorus, the 8th grade performing arts class. Uh, we have our, our two concerts each year, similar to, um, similar to LIS, we have the instrumental concert and the vocal concert, one in December, one usually in May or June. Uh, the Triumph Music Honor Society, we have special events, we have an arts festival, an in-house arts festival every year that our arts teachers and uh, students are heavily involved with. The students uh, compete at Hershey Park, I believe they're competing next year. Next year, it's every other year. So uh, Hershey Park is next year, and looking further ahead down the road, out some of our musical ensembles at the high school are now starting to travel. We, we took a few years off from traveling, but we're picking up with that tradition again. So the inaugural trip for the high school ensembles uh, next year is Walt Disney World. So if your students are interested in uh, performing in the marching band or singing in the, the choral ensembles, there's opportunities for them to not just travel to Hershey Park uh, in their seventh grade year, but also they can start fundraising now to help offset the cost of wherever the next trip happens to be. It may not be Disney World, but wherever, you know, Knoxville, Nashville, Tennessee, New Orleans, wherever it happens to be, that, that process can start now. And Mr. Taglarino, Mr., uh, Mrs. Clark, and Mr. Zumchak, our music teachers, can help your students uh, get, that, get established with that. Uh, Mrs. Richardson runs an after-school art club, which uh, she posts a lot of that on her uh, Cardinal Art Room Instagram, which is some phenomenal, phenomenal work. And we also try to get the arts uh, partner, we try to partner with community entities to help promote the arts in Lawrence Township as well. We've had students perform at Barnes & Noble. Uh, Mr. Tagorino organizes Tuba Christmas every year at the Princeton, at Princeton Market Fair. Uh, Mrs. Richardson spearheaded the um, the project at Captain Paul's, if you've, got, if you've seen the, the palette, the flags, and the, the silhouettes, um, Mrs. Richardson uh, spearheaded that with students from the middle school, so lots of opportunities to contribute to the community through the arts as well. 
And up next is Ms. Zedpa. So over Ms. Malaski. I just want to um, talk very quickly about um, music. So if your child is currently in band or orchestra, um, or uh, band or orchestra, we will automatically enroll them in band or orchestra here. So if you do not want to continue playing an instrument, they do not want to continue playing an instrument, then please reach out to me. Um, you can email or call the main office and we will take them off that list. Uh, if you are interested in playing an instrument, then also uh, give us a call and we can sign them up. So automatically, instrumental music. Chorus, because they do they run chorus a little bit differently than we do um, at the middle school, than they do at the intermediate school. I will send some information on how to sign up. I will send it most likely directly to the students, and then we will follow up with an email to you. And it most likely that will look like a Google form, probably. We had, last year we had them actually sign up in Genesis. It was confusing to people. Some people didn't get in. So we're now just going to try something different, see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll go back to our old way. Um, but I wanted to let you know about that. The other thing is Mrs. Kramer is here, our librarian, um, so I wanted to introduce her so you can see her. And um, as Dr. X said, she can set our library. Our kids love the library. They love going to the library. At lunchtime, they'll go there or they go to the gym. So they either go to the gym to run around or they're going to the library to, we have these comfy seats that they love to play with and make um, forts with. <laughs> Um, and they do that, and they read books, and they play games, you know, there's lots of board games and activities, so there's something for everybody um, here. All right, now for you all been waiting for, Mrs. Panasevich. Dr. Dini, I wish I had a drum roll, we have some of the kids here for this. So welcome, thank you for coming tonight. So you had some time to absorb the information on the slide as you were listening to Ms. Malowski, because you can all multitask very nicely. So we're going to start off with science for now. And as Ms. Malaski said before, we will take questions at the end so we can take in the information that's provided and then we'll be able to answer some questions at the end about um, the areas of math and science. So your ch children will take science for the two years that they're here. It's a full year course, which is different than what they're currently experiencing at the intermediate school. So it will be a full year academic. We basically instead of saying seventh graders are going to take life science and eighth graders are going to take physical science, we just run one curriculum for the building for the entire year. The way the New Jersey student learning st standards are set up, it doesn't dictate what should be done at any grade level. They just give us a barrage of standards and we can cover them any grade level, six through eight. We've dedicated our life and earth space science to the intermediate school level. So here at the middle school, we focus on life science and physical science. We are currently teaching all seventh and eighth graders are being instructed in the life science curriculum this year. Next year will be the physical science curriculum. So your children will get physical science in seventh and life science in eighth grade. Life science and the physical science are both nice foundation introductory courses to required courses at the high school of biology, which is freshman year, followed by chemistry their sophomore year. So they will have a foundation for those high school classes. Along with our academic program, we have some after school programs. We have Science Olympiad. We participate very often in a STEM event in Washdown in Washington, DC. We just had a group of students do that. Um, every year, Princeton Plasma Physics Lab offers a Young Women in STEM Symposium. We always take our mandated 10 students. It's not us that puts that cap on it, but the facility, because they are taking students from across the state of New Jersey, it's a very well-attended event. So our science teachers are working very hard to give them excellent learning opportunities within the classroom, and we also have some extracurricular uh, opportunities for them if they are so interested in that as well. Hold on to your seats. It's okay. Take a breath. We'll talk about math. So. No, let's stay here for a minute. So this is the math courses that we offer here. And math is very different. If 
you weren't aware of it, you are aware now we have different courses in math to enroll students in. All of our curriculum is aligned to the New Jersey student learning standards, and it is a very rigorous curriculum. It is not the seventh and eighth grade math that most of us experienced. That eighth grade at level math is what most of us experienced as a freshman in algebra. That's significant changes. So in seventh grade, we have our Math 7 and Math 7 Accelerated. Math 7 Accelerated um, covers additional topics. Um, it covers all of the seventh grade standards and one half of the eighth grade standards. Where can students go after Math 7? They go into Math 8. Typically, the path from students in Math 7 Accelerated is to Algebra 1. We also offer Academic Assistance Instruction, ASI, in Mathematics. That's for struggling students. We do a lot of skill building in that particular class. We do pre-teaching so that students have the confidence when they go to their standard math class to participate or to give them that leg up with a comfort of an introduction to some topics before they see it in a large classroom setting. Our ASI classes are very small. They are typically under 10 students or about that number. So it's a smaller, safe environment um, for students who, who may perform better in an area that they might not feel as comfortable or confident with. Math Seminar, we have it in grades seven and eight. And Math Seminar actually teaches content that we took out of each of the content of the grade levels because it is such a, a lofty curriculum based on the standards that the state is recommending that we were saying that we need to address and we teach that in our seminar class it helps us to better pace our standard math classes so we have a proportional uh, statistics that comes out of one of the curriculum and it goes into math seminar. So that's what we do there. So a lot of you are very interested in these parameters that we use. We need to use something. We need to use data, make data informed incision, decisions on where to place students. What this is what we're looking for. So there's probably some understanding that you know kids can't go from a math six class into math seven accelerated. That is a fallacy. They can and they do. So if your child is sitting in math six, those are the criteria that we're looking for for placement into math seven accelerated. Now, there are opportunities when you get your letter in June telling you where your child has been placed to challenge that placement. There are opportunities for that built into the system. Yes, it is going to be an assessment-based type of challenge, but we need to do something. We need, felt we needed to have something available. So it is an assessment. We will take a second look at park scores when we get them in in July or August. We will do everything we can to look at a child multiple times to make sure they are placed in the most appropriate course for them. Ms. Malaski talked about social emotional learning and, and kids break down. They break down when they feel overly challenged, when they feel like they can't keep up in a class. So we, we like to try and put them where they're fit into the best profile for them to have not only academic success, but personal success in the way that they feel in that class and how they receive the subject. If your child is in Math 6 accelerated, those are the criteria to remain at that level. We have worked with 
changing things from time to time and changing schedules based on teacher recommendations once they get here at the middle school. It is a tedious process. I will lay my eyes on multiple data points for every single one of your children. I'm not perfect, as you can see, I wear glasses. So we do our best. I sit in we conference, Ms. Malaski and I, about borderline students. What was the teacher recommendation? What was the comment made? We just don't willy-nilly or just say, yep, we're going to put them here. It is a very thoughtful and long process with us working with the intermediate school teachers and then Ms. Malaski and I working together on that. So a lot of times you'd like to know and see the progression. This is a possible progression for any one of your children, regardless of where they come in and which math class they um, will take while they're here with us in the middle school. And we're even going to go a little further for those of you who might look or have some questions. You're going to want and, and if your child remains in a placement, you're going to want to know, what can I do to advance their math? We can advance their math. We typically do it between grades 8 and 9. And these are the ways that potentially students can change their math placement moving into the high school. This is something called Option 2. It's in the New Jersey DOE standards. It is a high school opportunity. It is not designed for middle school. So we can help you with all of this. So my next slide, here is the lifetime of math from middle school into high school. For those of you who are interested in what can the future hold. Our course offering book for the high school, for those of you that are interested, is online. If you go to the high school homepage, click on guidance, scroll down, you'll find it. Because there are requirements or performance criteria for each one of the classes. Um, and that is a potential sequence for students grade 7 through grade 12. Every year, we have to provide or take assessments, and there's a, there's a, a, a picture, there we go. <laughs> I'm going to post it so you'll get it. So for our students that are currently right now taking algebra at the middle school, which by the way, they have to do the entire high school algebra curriculum plus the other half of the eighth grade standards, they've got to do all that in one year. But Right now, the state graduation requirement is taking and passing the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment in Algebra at a level four or five in order to earn a high school graduation diploma. Now, although Ms. Nolaski accurately said, colleges don't see transcripts, et cetera, from seventh grade or middle school, if they take Algebra one in middle school, that assessment that they will take, they would need to perform at that level to qualify to meet graduation requirements in the eighth grade. That's a pretty, we, we have a great success rate with our students, but that is something for you to recognize that you're looking at a high school graduation requirement being completed at a very high level here at the middle school. So, summer math packets will happen, will happen. And that's really, you know, we support students reading all summer. It is best if maybe, don't wait till the day before school, but maybe sometime in August, maybe a page night. And that's just to refresh their skills to be ready coming in. We also have assistance, so you can call into the middle school, make an appointment, and 
we'll have a math teacher here to help your child if they get stuck. It says where in your Go Math book to find this stuff as well. This isn't learning on their own, it's a review of skills that we feel they should come into the middle school with, that they experience at the sixth grade level. Um, and just so you know that many of our high school courses, not only in the area of mathematics, have summer assignments too. They're posted on the website. You'll be able to get them there. The summer math packet will be posted uh, on the district as well as the middle school website for you to access as well. I'll be around to take questions at the end. All right, so as you had said, we will be sending home a math letter to you. Uh, usually it comes out the week after school lets out um, because we need to make sure that we have the latest MWA that they've had and the benchmark assessment and as you had said we really go through all of the data uh, with the fine tooth comb to make sure that it's correct so you get a letter it usually comes out last week in June um, it will also have the dates for when we have the challenge test and it will have the dates when we have the math lab open in the summertime uh, for your students if they need assistance. So you can have all that will be there and then we'll post all that information as well on our website for you. All right, health and physical education curriculum, I'll go over that with you. Uh, we, they have health in seventh grade and in eighth grade. They have health and PE every other day. So one day they have PE, one day they have health and so forth and it just rotates uh, throughout the year that way. You can see the health topics. Um, and these are important topics. Some of them they've had before. They're going to have more advanced. They're going to be talking about this stuff. So they might have questions for you. So be ready to answer them, right? Um, all right, so I'm, I'm going to let, um, they pretty much stand, you know, this kind of talks for itself, so I don't really need to go through that um, with you. But I'm going to have um, Mr. Solomon go through with you about athletics and about physicals. Um, impact testing, what that is, and eligibility with you. Okay, so athletics here at the middle school, uh, what I've learned by being here this year is that the kids are very supportive of each, each other. Uh, we have, we always tell uh, team sports in the fall, winter and the spring. In the fall we have boys and girls soccer, field hockey, and cross country. In the winter we have boys and girls basketball, wrestling, and cheerleading. And in the spring, we have baseball, softball, and track. Um, it does get competitive. Um, in some of our teams, we do have to have tryouts and we do make cuts. Um, but the kids really work hard to participate in these programs. Um, the, the important pieces to understand when you want your child to, to participate in our sports here is a process they have to go through. You've got to get the paperwork in. And it begins with registering online. You go to the athletic portion on our website. There's a sign-up page. The sign-up page allows us to know that you know that your children are signed up and want to try out for a team. Once that piece is done, they must have a physical. Physical is done. Uh, the nurse will get that information. You'll get an email saying that the physical is clear, it's in, you're registered. Okay, and then they have to do an impact test, a concussion test. Um, it's a test that takes about 30 minutes. We get the kids on the computer. In the summertime, we'll do it all together. Uh, during the winter and spring season, they usually do it in the nurse's office. But it gives the nurse a baseline uh, data of where their their brains are prior to any concussion. So that way, if the, if the concussion takes place, they can run through the test to see if they're able to come back. And they test it, they measure it uh, with the baseline. Um, once the impact concussion test is over, and all the paperwork is done, you'll get an email uh, from, the, from the system that we use allowing you to know that they're cleared to participate in that sport that you signed them up for. And then they can begin to practice. They cannot begin practice until that process is done. Okay, and then the final piece, but not the, but, but the most important piece is also academics. We want to partner with you to monitor academics if they're not holding their end of the bargain in the classroom, Okay, then it may be put on a, a progress report to, to try to see if we can improve their grades or we may have to send them out until their grades can improve. But it's a partnership between us here in the building and you for monitoring the students' ac academic progress and making sure they remain eligible in the class. All right,
Okay, we also have an int intramural program, so the students who, who may not want to participate on teams, they can still go through the same process, the physical process, and participate in our intramural programs. We usually do basketball and volleyball, but this also gives them an opportunity to compete against the staff in our, um, in our staff games that we have. And uh, this year, I'm a little disappointed, but the kids are very happy that they beat us in basketball this year. So, gotta get in better shape so I can perform a little bit better with my colleagues.
We want parents to come, brothers and sisters to come. We have 10th graders from the um, high school that come down. They lead some of our groups, but really it's our kids leading the groups. And if you haven't read the book, it's okay. You can still come and participate. We try to pick books that are really um, you know, universal, real world things that you can just talk about. Um, and then it's just, you just kind of sit there in awe of the kids as they talk about the books themselves. We have no homework nights. On those nights, we give you off and we tell you to go out and have dinner at one of three restaurants that we'll have an association with and we get a portion of that check and that money goes to the activities that we do here. So we really appreciate if you take us up on going out to those restaurants um, so that we can get a little bit of a portion of your bill. We have prize days, we have our career days on there again. Arts festival, as you heard, student versus staff, basketball, volleyball games, we do community service, we have field day, and we recognize students of the month. It's a lot going on here. It's kind of, uh, one of my friends, she's like, it's like a cruise ship. Um, and I'm Julie. Those of you that know love them, right? Okay, I'm really aging myself right now. All right, this is my crazy staff. They're awesome. And you're going to love them. You're going to meet them. We might even come to your house on a bus in the summertime um, and knock on your door. So we just love being here. You have to be a special person to be part of a middle school. And these people have dedicated their careers. So uh, be open to them um, and share with them the things that you're concerned about. And we're here to help. That's it. I wanted to get it done in an hour. It's seven. It's eight fifteen. We started a little late, so I think I just went a little over. Questions? Come on. Go ahead. She's brave. I I've heard you guys have tennis, but I didn't see. That. We do not have tennis. Okay. So they might play tennis in gym, but we don't have tennis as an extracurricular activity. Um, in the past, when the tennis season is over, sometimes for the high school, uh, they're their coach may do like an after school, but it all depends on what's going on and what their schedule and how far they go in their season. And the tennis team actually at the high school is getting quite good, so they've been making the state playoffs, so their time necessarily might not come to exist, but they are on the tennis court in the fall and in the spring here. Um, but we play tennis in gym class. Okay. Yes? So that was the one we were talking about is they might have academic support instruction. We also have a math lab during lunchtime every day. Um, and we also have after school homework help. There's a homework club. And if you qualify, um, there we have these after school workshops. So we have a math lab and a writing lab after school as well. But you have to qualify for that and you'll get a letter about if you qualify. So there's certain criteria for that. Yes. Extension period. Um, we have what we call a tag day. It is not the same in terms of what they do at LIS where they have clubs and activities during the school day. Um, our tag day, what it is for, is that for all the band, orchestra, and chorus to have full rehearsals. And so that happens maybe once, twice a month. It also is an abbreviated schedule. So then the students that are not in tag, orchestra, or chorus can also get extra help at that point. Um, they may, their teacher may have them coming to their classroom or we're doing school-wide activities. So there might be some other activity that we're doing. But that it may be once or twice a month. Sometimes it's probably once a month. And as we get closer to concerts, we usually have more. Or if we're having a special assemblies, we use a tag day schedule. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, but it's not clubs during the day. No, we do not have a study hall. There is no daily study hall. We have a, a class called Cardinal Time uh, that is our character ed class. Um, and that's what we're doing a lot of also our soft skills thing. So we're really talking about those interpersonal skills. We're talking about what it means to be respectful, responsible, and ready. So in Cardinal Time, they have a 40 minute lesson and usually they'll have about 20 minutes to do homework. If they're, if they're a student, though, that is in band and orchestra, ECP, which is our gifted and talented program, they most likely will not have carnival time. Okay? Um, so that's something. They're not going to be, lo like, they're not loaded up with homework. If it's taking them um, exorbitant amount of time to do homework, something's wrong. All right? That's when you need to get on the phone, 
call the teacher or email the teacher and say, it's taking my kid this long to get done whatever they're doing. It should not take them that long, okay? Um, so let us know that if it is. Question over here, yes? So I'm very happy about the World Language I love hearing that you're happy. <laughs> Um, about the world language? The world language, yes. Can you clarify? It sounded like it's not every day. It's not every day. So we have our world language for seventh grade is a trimester. So they get 30 days of Spanish, 30 days of French, and 30 days of uh, Chinese. Then in the eighth grade year, they select one of those. And they will have it for 90 days but in the eighth grade every year. Day throughout the year, or it's every like there's a quarter that they It's every other, no, it's not like, um, I know in, at LAS sometimes they had um, social studies in the beginning of the year and science, is, we don't do that, it's every other day. So it rotates with either carnal time, seminar, um, or a music class or something like that. So in seventh grade, they, they get 90 days, but it's 90 days divided by the three, um, areas and in the eighth grade year it's 90 days of um, the language that they specifically want and the majority of our students get to level two when they enter the high school unless they decide to change languages so it's it's very you know compressed to level one with the 90 days because that's a semester um, and we're actually you know this is something that we're in discussion about and how we're gonna try to get more language um, but it's, it's a struggle because we only have one French teacher, one Spanish teacher, and one Chinese teacher. And they're teaching the entire seventh grade. And, you know, a hundred kids are taking Spanish, and a hundred kids are taking French, and eight figure and so on. So, um, that's something. Yes? So you mentioned at lunch, recess, the kids need to go outside or go into the library. Do you monitor these kids that are going to the library? No, we just let them go. <laughs> I am a comedian. You led me to that. Come on. You gave that one to me. Yes. So you're monitoring the kids to maybe say, hey, um, why don't you check out the fresh air that's outside? We actually don't go outside. We go to the um, to the gym. And it's and what we do, and I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Um, we do... Uh, Activities. So they might set up, we might have a three on three basketball tournament. They might be playing, if they're playing volleyball and the nets are up, they'll set up uh, volleyball teams for the kids. So they'll decide if they want to be on a team or not. Um, we don't send every single kid. So we'll say there's last 10 minutes and they have the option to go. So they don't have, like where I was at LAS the other day, every single six grade went outside. It was cold out, right? I was not prepared. <laughs> so we don't force them to, we don't force. We are cool in middle school. We don't force anything, right? Because uh, I'm in eighth grade, I am too cool. You will not make me get up and go to the gym to play basketball when I don't want to. They might want to stay to socialize. So they can socialize in the cafeteria. They can choose to go if they're in a team, then they go and they're in the team activity. If it might be open gym, the gym teachers, I have them all scheduled for the lunch. So they kind of rotate that and decide what activities based on the year, based on kids' interests and things like that. Um, and then the library pieces is if they want to go to the library, they can choose to go to the library, they sign out of the cafeteria, head to the, um, to the library, and Mrs. Kramer is there with uh, Mrs. Coleman, and she's supervising the library activities. Did that answer your question or not? Well, the kids, so the kids don't go outside at all. They don't go outside. They only go outside when it's gym time. So the gym, they usually go out in the fall and in the spring, uh, depending again on the weather. And then um, sometimes classes actually go outside for different things too. So I, I allow them to go out if they want to go out and have class outside. Um, the art teacher takes them out. Sometimes they're doing different things that they're drawing outside. Science class goes out. They did uh, their solar ovens, so they needed to go outside because they were cooking what they in their solar ovens. Um, so they can go outside if they're not going out every day. Yes. No, they cannot use their own devices ever. So that was a really good question. Um, so they they must, if they need to bring their cell phone, they can bring it to school, but it must be off and in their locker. 
that they cannot carry it on them. If they have it on them, we see it on them or they're using it, then we will take it. The first time we give it back at the end of the day, the next time you have to come in and um, come and get it. And usually what happens is you come and get it and give your cell phone. And I say, here you go, parent. And then you go and you give it to the kid. And I'm like, don't do that. Wait till you get outside. Um, <laughs> So you get what I mean on that one. But they cannot use their own devices. They have a computer. So if you really, here's the thing. They always will say, well, my mom's calling. If you need to get in touch with them, they all have laptops. They all have emails. Email them. <laughs> They're checking. We're teaching them. That's one thing. I don't think the sixth grade checks. We are teaching them to check their emails. Because they are going to be getting alerts. They get emails from me. So there, I send them to them from LMS Nation. Sometimes I send them as my own name. Um, they send me emails. I just got an email from a young lady yesterday about something that was going on, and she needed some help with something. So we teach them to check their email. There's, they don't drive, so you can't have them go anywhere and do any errands for you. And if it's really important that you need to talk to them, please call the office. We will get them. If it's, a, it's, a, it's an emergency, we can identify that it's you on the phone. Um, then we will have them come down. They can use their cell phone and call you because we know that's usually when it's an emergency that you'll answer. Because you, you see it's my number, sometimes you don't answer, I know. So if they call from their own phone, I know you'll answer. So we're not that mean, right? So if a kid, teach your kid to say, if they need to get in contact with you to come to the office, go to their school counselor, they can bring their cell phone if they need to because if that's the number you're gonna answer and they can call you that. But there's nothing that's that emergency, right? Because they, they're here. They're, they're, they're 12 and 13 years old. I don't know if that answered yet. Yeah. Well, to be careful on that, too, because I'm going to tell you, if you use inappropriate language, I see it. <laughs> I don't want to be in your business, but sometimes i got to be in your business, right? So I really, that's one of the things that crack me up. Sometimes they come and they're like, Mom, I, I don't feel good, I'm throwing up. I have it. Somehow that comes up on an Autobot thing. And um, so I see all this stuff and they're like telling me how they don't feel good and blah, 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 or you know, something is emotional. It'll come up to me. So just know that whenever you're ready. But if you need something, you know, you, you need to send them, like, you know, if you've told them, they're supposed to stay after school. Or something, and they didn't tell you, so they're going to email you and say, Mom, I'm staying after school. You write back and say, Okay, I'll meet you at door number whatever uh, at four o'clock. Um, you know, that's I'm assuming that's the kind of thing you want to email them. You know, hi, honey, how you doing? Like, that's that's creepy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get old after a while. You might want to put a little note with their lunch, but other than that, don't be emailing them every day. They're, they're, they're learning. Yeah. Yes. Um, we can talk if it's twins. We usually like to divide them. Most parents do. Some parents don't. Um, I don't put them in the same classes, in the same exact class. I try not to. But I'm going to tell you, we had 13 sets of twins, and I think in seventh grade. Um, that's hard scheduling. That's a lot. It's, there's only so many places they can go, right? Um, so sometimes they end up with their person. I don't know how it happens. And sometimes, they, you know, because sometimes you don't want them together. Um, sometimes we don't want them together. And uh, but traditionally, I try to keep them uh, not. Sometimes totally different houses. Sometimes on the same house, just to make the parents sainer. Um, but it's really kind of that's a conversation we can have um, if you if you want to request something for that. Yeah. How does jazz band work? You had mentioned for orchestra and for concert band, they would automatically. Same thing for jazz band. If they qualified in sixth grade for jazz band, they'll qualify for here for jazz band. If your son or daughter wants to be in jazz band, then Mr. Tagorino will probably audition them. If your child's not currently in jazz band and would like to be, they can certainly speak to Mr. Hoagland, uh, who will talk, uh, who's the, the, the teacher at, at the intermediate school, and he and Mr. Tagorino will, will link up before the end of this school year. Mr. Tag will come down, listen to them play, not an audition in the strictest sense, but just to get a sense of their, of their level of proficiency and get some ideas as to where they would be fit for them. Can you be in multiple ensembles? Like, can you be an orchestra and jazz band? Yes and no. So it depends on their, what their other needs are. So if they have 
Um, if they're in the jazz band and orchestra and they're G&T, no. If they're in, if they want to be in jazz band, orchestra, and chorus, no. You, they only can get two. You know, if they need, um, if they need certain requirements because they have an IEP, that their IEP is going to trump all these other elected types of things. So there's only two spots open, and usually they won't have either seminar or carnal time um, in place of these music classes. They don't, what's different at, at the intermediate school is they're pulled out for the day. They, they're not pulled out. It's part of their schedule. Right? It is part of their daily schedule. They will have a jazz band class. They will have an orchestra class. They will have a chorus class if they choose that. If they're not choosing that, then they most they will have seminar. Um, they will have carnal time, or they might have um, ASI instruction. Those are those every other day classes. Okay. If if they're in jazz band, remember they're doing double music. So they're doing their jazz band music and they're doing the concert band music. So it's an accelerated. They're they're doing more. So that means they should be practicing. <laughs> you have a question? Um, I have a child who is in band as well as choir. So the default is you would enroll her into band. She would definitely go into band, and the reason I don't put them automatically in choir is because from what I understand of how choir works there, it's like, all right, everybody do choir, so you don't have to stay in wherever. So kids don't necessarily want to be in choir. Um, they kind of choose more to be in music, into the instrumentals at the at LIS. That's kind of just what I know and what I believe. You can change my mind on that, but that's kind of what I've seen. So the kids said, I don't want to take 300 seventh graders and put the number one on. That's a huge course, right? Um, and I don't have enough room for that necessarily in their schedules. I want kids who are really serious about being in chorus, so that's why we do it that way. Most of the kids that are in band and orchestra are already committed to the instrument because you either bought it or you're renting it. You're, you know, this you come with all the time. So she would want to do choir in addition to band. No, she'll automatically go into band, and then when I put out to you the sign up for chorus, that'll come and that'll I'll be able to do it. Yes. Four o'clock. We have a four o'clock late bus. Um, sometimes they run two buses, sometimes it's <coughs> one, depending. If they haven't signed up for the late bus by lunchtime, they won't put them on. They, they, because they do a route, they will also not stop at their normal bus stop. It might be your neighborhood stop, right? So for instance, if you live in Avalon Run, they're not going to do their normal four stops in Avalon Run. I don't know if that's going to it up, but they might just stop at the clubhouse in Avalon Run. That makes sense. So they make up a schedule based on who signs up each day for the late bus. And remember, it's 4 o'clock. They're, they're traveling all. It's one bus for the middle school and high school. So they're traveling all around Lawrence. So a lot of times I'll get the call. One time you get the 545. My kid's not home yet. And so it's because they're on, they might be on the other side of Route 1. And they hit traffic. And they might have a lot of people. And so it, they might not be home to 6 sometimes. On bus. But at least it's something that they have offered. A lot of these do their homework. Um, but it, it, it's not that bad. It's a, usually it's a winner, I think, it's the morning. And we don't let kids, that's the other thing too. When it's dark out, I don't let kids walk home when it gets really dark out. So like if they're here for basketball practice till 5, all the sports are till 5, if not later. 3 to 5. Why are you looking at me like that? Okay. <laughs> 3 to 5. It's all sports practice every day. It's not every other day. Practice is every day. Okay? Thank you for shaking your head and, and agreeing with me. They're practice every day um, during those seasons. There's no Saturday practices. There's no Sunday. Wrestling does have, I think it's a Sunday tournament. There's a Mercer County tournament. If they qualify for on, on, that's on a Sunday, I think that's the only outlier um, of the group. If they're on track, some of those meets take a while. Obviously, baseball and softball, they can go all night, you know, depending on what happens. The other sports, they usually are over when they're supposed to be over. Because there's no, there's no overtime for ties and stuff like that. Yes? Should we check the website and then we try it out? Yes. Okay, you should probably look at the paperwork now. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Z has posted that information yet, but the, the tryout for the fall is usually the first week of school. But they need to have all their paperwork done prior to. So if you're a fall sport person, 
some of you, they might, you might have missed the physical, so you might have to get the paperwork, go to the doctor and have to fill it out, or you might have to get a physical. Um, because they have to have the physical in the full calendar year, year. Calendar, calendar year. year. It has to be in the calendar year um, prior to that sports season starting. So if you're going to be a fall sport, I would start looking at that now, and then the tryouts will, will be the first week of school. And those and um, those sports tend to cut, except cross country, um, soccer, field hockey. Field hockey does. It depends on how many girls go out, um, but they tend not to cut. If you have to leave, don't. I will. I won't judge you. So you have great. That's why I know you were being very nice. You can go. It's okay. Yes. So if your kid makes the basketball team, yes, and it's getting dark and it's five o'clock. Do you live close? Are you a walker? Yes. Um, that's we we'll have to talk about it. Um, it's because it's this. It's Princeton, but if they're going Princeton Pike, yeah. you know that's usually it depends on what side of the street, all that kind of stuff. Um, actually, no. Actually, going back. They go back to the football yeah. field and football field. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we can talk about it. I, okay. The thing is, too, like dances and stuff, like you gotta come, you gotta park and come in. Like, I don't let like kids at 9 o'clock walk home. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, it's just it's just I don't want to get hit by a car. Unfortunately, we've had not middle school kids, but we've had middle high school kids that got hit by a car at night. That's, and they're not paying attention, you know. Um, are, are they gonna ride their bikes? Yeah, we have, we have two big bike racks. We have a lot of kids who ride their bikes to school. So that's a really good thing. Yes. 